How's it going today everybody and welcome back to Shaner's Mechanic Life. Do you have power windows in your vehicle and they don't work at all or only in one way like this one? Doesn't go down but it goes up. Natural instinct is I gotta order a new switch. These things can be costly and they might not be in stock. In this video I'm going to show you how you can fix these. Saving yourself time, money, and the ability to roll your windows up and down on a hot summer day. Let me show you how. Here we go. Now whether you got a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, Honda, what, anything, or even like this. This is out of a Can-Am Defender. Most of the power window switches are designed the same. Basically you just got a toggle up and down. Now if you look at them, a lot of times you can take these apart if you're very careful. Now don't get me wrong, some switches are made to go together once and if you try to get into it, it's just going to be a mess and a million pieces. But the way I figure, you're already ready to buy a new one, why not take the old one apart and see what you can do with it? You know, if you can save yourself some money, you know, you can put it towards something else like take your wife out for dinner or maybe buy new tools, <clears throat> new tools. So anyway, let's open this up and see what we got. So if you flip it over to the back side and take a close look, a lot of times you can see what holds that switch in there. You can see a little bit of plastic here and there. If you get a small screwdriver and gently pry that back, Hopefully you can lift this assembly right out and get access to the inside. You don't need any special tools, just basically a small screwdriver. So like I said, just gently try to get in there and pry it out. Keep in mind this is all just plastic so it breaks very easily. So I release that, now you want to lift it straight up. And all the pieces have already fallen out, like I was saying. So, stop right there and instead of dumping it out, take a look. Okay, we've got a spring here. And you can go ahead and dump it out, and we got another spring here. So it's a pretty safe bet that that will go right back there. So now, take a close look at all the parts that came out. As you can see here we've got where the connector goes on. We've got some contacts on the top and bottom. And you can see this will sit right in there like that. But what you want to look for, these are all contacts get a light so you can see better. If you look at that top right one and some of the other ones, you see that black dot? Hard to focus here. That's arcing. Now if you get too much of that, that's going to stop uh, continuity and your signal is not going to be getting through that contact. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean that up. A lot of times you can get at that and achieve that just by getting your pocket screwdriver again and gently scraping it cleaning off all that black arcing residue just take your time you don't want to cause any more damage and go along and clean them out now you can see a lot of it's already come off, but I'm still not 100% happy with that. So I'm going to get a little piece of sandpaper and see if we can scuff it up and make it like new again. And to do that, I'm going to show you a little trick I've done in the past. Get a small piece of fine sandpaper, you don't want anything too coarse, and tear a small strip. And then what you're going to do, you're going to put that over the end of your pocket screwdriver and now you got a mini little sander 
So now you can get in there and do a way better job. You take your time again, you can make it so it's brand new. Okay, so now I've got them cleaned up the best I can. You go ahead and look at your other pieces because there's going to be contacts on there too. You can see the one on the right, that's nice and clean and almost as good as new. The one on the left, you can see a little bit of arcing. And same thing with this one. So you just give them the same treatment. Just some fine sandpaper and you just gently clean them up. Again, you don't want to take too much material off or you don't want to put any gouges or deep grooves in it. See? That one's good as new. So now we can go ahead and put our switch back together. Now when you put stuff like this back together again, you want to make sure you put it back together the same way as it came apart. As you can see here where our springs are. If you look inside the housing here, you can see up at the front, the two pads where the springs sit. So now we know what way to put our switch back together. So first we're going to put our contacts back in. What you want to do, see the contacts in the inside, you want to put these back so it's contact to contact. The best way I found to do that is get a little pair of needle nose pliers or something and put it down sometimes it's pretty tight getting into those places and put them back in place do both of them just want to make sure you do a job like that you want to ease off on a coffee a few hours before so now that we got our pieces in there we're left with this what this does if you look on the inside, see that white piece down at the bottom? That slides onto that. And these little rollers, when you go kind of up and down with a switch, that will move these contacts to either engage one or the other. Now to keep everything together, I figure keep this facing down. So all our pieces don't fall out again. And we're going to flip the switch upside down and put it on. Only hard thing is, we've got this. You know, gravity be, being a pain in the butt as it is, I'm going to show you a little trick. On this piece in that little hole, what I usually do, just get a little, just a little dab of grease or something. You don't need too much. Just enough to put some in the hole and you put it back down on the stud and that grease is going to hold it in place long enough for us to install it. Plus the moving around a little bit of lubrication can never hurt. So now we're going to try to keep a steady hand. Flip it upside down. Hopefully our pieces don't fall out and slowly line everything up holding it level and steady so nothing gets shifted out of position and gently put it in place until you hear it click like that and now check your switches make sure everything works make sure all your pins are lined up and the plastic locks are in place like they are now let's take it over to the vehicle put it in and see if our windows work so we can go ahead, grab our switch, put our connectors on the same way as it came off. Just put our switch in like that. Now we can turn our key on. What do you think? Is it going to work?
Window goes down. Window goes up. Window goes down. Window goes up. Well, we got our power windows working and it didn't cost us a dime. Only thing it costs is a little bit of our own time and no fancy tools, just stuff you probably already got kicking around the house anyway. Window goes down, window goes up. Then we just saved ourselves quite a bit of money because some of these switches can get quite expensive. Just goes to show if you're ready to buy a switch anyway, why not take it apart? See if you can fix it. It might be something extremely basic just like this. And worst case scenario, you can't fix it. Then you just buy the new switch anyway. Like I said earlier in the video, a lot of these power window switches are built very similar. Most of them, you might be able to take it apart and fix it like we did. But there are some out there just giving you a warning that once you pry them open, there's no going back. They're done. Throw them in the garbage. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you like that video, hit that like button. If you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and notification bell in the bottom right hand corner. That way you get notified when we get new videos coming out. Well, that's it for tonight, everybody. Have a good night, and thanks for watching.